Hey Racer, I am here in the Nissan Ziad pit with Lucas Adonias, one of the uh, ace drivers from their GT Academy who's gone from a kid with a dream in Spain to racing here multiple times at Le Mans, definitely a shining example of what that program has done. I think it'd be safe to say this is uh, easily the craziest car here at Le Mans? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know if the craziest, but uh, the most different and the, you know, the most innovative and, you know, and, and different for sure. Uh, obviously, the front of the car is tapered heavily like an arrow. We have front suspension and brakes here. Tell us about it. Tell us about the design and how it works. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the, the main reason of the, the narrow front is uh, for aerodynamic, uh, you know, uh, improvement. No, It's a very light car and, and uh, what we want to, to show is uh, a reduce of, uh, you know, fuel consumption in the petrol engine, the ice engine, and also uh, the EV system, the electric motor. So uh, this shape, this kind of shape with a narrow front uh, uh, reduce the drag so, uh, and, and the weight of the car. So uh, that really, really helps for, for the better performance for, for us in, in electric uh, uh, driving for sure. We have a, a car that is heavily hybrid. Tell us about what's on the steering wheel here, what you use to do what you do. Yeah, well, in this cop kit, is, uh, the, we have some extra switches than in a normal prototype, but especially, you know, the CO switch where we can uh, change, you know, from ICE, uh, internal combustion engine, to EV, electrical vehicle, uh, as it says. And, uh, you know, we have to work really, really a lot with the engineers uh, during every run. Here we have the, the region, re region Generators uh, uh, system, you know, we, we can the higher number we have here, we can um, recover more energy, you know, to, to put on the on the batteries for another extra lap or in in electric mode. Um, obviously, we're using uh, the DRS system, very efficient for us in in the straights. Uh, it reduces a lot of drag, uh, a lot of uh, wind resistance in in the straights, so we can. Uh, increase our uh, performance uh, on top speed and also reduce the the energy you know we need for for that lap and you know uh, all of that all the rest of the switches are pretty the same as in a normal prototype flashing lights radio uh, well the, all about the fuel reset system neutral uh, the paddle shift is just normal in like in a normal prototype and and that's it and the pit limiter uh, that's for the screen Screen and all the menus on we, we we can we can go through during the race in in the screen. You also have on the top left here, if you look towards the top of the cockpit, you have a, a pretty cool rear view system. So. Uh, how much are you looking forward? How much are you watching the movie behind you? Yeah, well, this is uh, really important. No? As we don't have uh, mirrors, uh, the mirrors will make uh, more draggy, more more resistant to the wind and more consumption. So so we, we decided to put install this uh, radar system. Uh, very, very useful. No? Uh, really nice quality screen. And, and uh, the radar detects every car which is coming uh, behind us. And, and it's really, really easy to, to, you know, to find out if an LMP1 or a GT car is behind or an LMP2. Continuation of uh, innovative aerodynamics on the side derived from a concept uh, come up with by Dan Gurney and John Ward at All American Racers works incredibly effective. Tell us about it. Well, yeah, this is quite a really important uh, part of the of the car. No, uh, this is where, where all the not all, but uh, uh, the important downforce of the car comes. You know, all under the underneath the car, we have a uh, uh, big. You know, vortex generators we call uh, where the airflow comes from the front and and it flows in like a you know like a turbine, and uh, it, it it really really takes a lot of downforce and sucks the car into the ground. So so that's really really important to have a good performance through the Porsche course, for example, in high speed corners. And uh, yep, yeah, then we've we've got all that you know. All the aerodynamic design underneath is is, is pretty awesome. No, uh, you can see the car has no wings, no 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 dive planes, nothing nothing to to create the drag and downforce. So all the downforce is created by underneath. So it's it's pretty cool to see how it works. Uh, 
Uh, standing in front of the DRS system, uh, I swear this is not a Formula One car, so tell me how you guys are getting away with this. Well, this is uh, another very important part of the, the car in terms of aerodynamics. You know? uh, uh, when we go down into Mulsanne straight, we want uh, this, this flap really, really down you know, to get the, the highest speed as possible, to get the less drag as possible. Uh, but then when we go into the Porsche course, for example, uh, we want this uh, DRS system up you know, uh, to get the a lot of downforce on the rear and to have the the highest speed as possible in in through the corner so uh, we can activate not like in formula one we can activate uh, the drs system every every exit of the corner we want so in every exit of the corners we press the drs to get this down and to get the highest speed as possible so uh, yeah we Definitely this race will work a lot more on the switches and by, with the radio and the engineers than, than in LMP2, LMP1 or GT racing. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the petrol turbo portion of the, uh, the power plant here. Well, the, the, the engine is, the, the petrol engine is uh, part of uh, uh, the innovation of this project, no, uh, uh, it's a 1.5 liter engine, three cylinder, only weights 40 kilograms. It's you know never seen, never seen something like that before. No, it's so small you can take it with your hands and and it gives you over 400 horsepower. So it's uh, absolutely incredible what, what's in in this reduced amount of space. Apart from that, we have two electric motors. We have we've got the the motor controller. It, which you know controls all the all the energy recovery, distributes all the energy to the 12, 12 volts for the dashboard, for example, or distributes the energy to to the battery to get back the energy. What does this feel like when you're on the track? How much of a kick are you getting uh, in your back seat, per se? <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, it's it's hard to say, but uh, you know, in 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 electric mode, the the, the car has a nearly the same potential as in the petrol engine. Uh, the only thing is we are in Le Mans. Le Mans track is really, really long, so so that makes uh, more difficulties, more challenges to, to, to the team and to us to, to develop uh, in the same perform, to, to perform as in the petrol engine. But uh, obviously uh, uh, to drive in electric mode uh, gives you a lot of torque. Uh, we're using the same gearbox, the uh, same gear ratio, all goes through the same uh, transmission. So. Uh, you know, everything is pretty smooth, uh, changing from EV electric mode to, to petrol or vice versa. All right, racer, this is Lucas. He and his uh, teammates have, honestly, one of the coolest cars I've seen at Le Mans. I don't know how long. Uh, how are they going to do? We don't know. They don't know. They're going to do their best. Bottom line, they're breaking boundaries here. And I would say that's probably more important than wherever they'd finished.